a looser, a lo no, wait a minute, 12 inches, 6 inches, yeah, about, yeah, no, yeah, 6 inches. To learn from some of my lessons that I learned along the way, mm, that doesn't make sense. Today I thought I would do a quick video on what to expect when you're getting an ultrasound guided biopsy. So first I thought I would tell you what happens during this appointment and then I will kind of break it down for you and go into a little bit more detail. And last I'll go over some of the lessons that I learned along the way so that hopefully you'll be and feel more prepared than I was when I had these appointments. And also I'll put a link somewhere up here to a previous video that I did where I touched on a few more lessons that I learned from my two ultrasound guided biopsies. So definitely check those out if you haven't seen that video yet. So basically what happens in this appointment is you will get undressed from the waist up and you'll get in the gown and then you will lie down either on your back or on your side on a, just a regular exam table. And in my appointments, what happened first is the nurse actually did an ultrasound first just to make sure that it was clear where the radiologist was going to need to go and what areas they were going to need to be focusing on. And then you will get a lidocaine injection or a few lidocaine injections. And lidocaine numbs up the area so that by the time the radiologist goes in with the biopsy needle, I'm not sure if that's the word for it, <laughs> but by the time the radiologist goes in with the biopsy needle or whatever that's called, you're not gonna feel it. And when you get the lidocaine injection, it's not just one, it's usually a few to make sure that they're getting the whole general area numb. And then the radiologist will come in and he or she will start performing the biopsy. And really what the ultrasound guided biopsy is, is the radiologist is taking a hollow needle and is putting it into your breast and the goal is they're getting a tiny little sample or maybe even a few tiny samples of your tissue and then later on that will be sent off to pathology and then the radiologist will be able to tell whether these tissues have cancerous cells in them. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of break it down a little bit. So when you get the ultrasound done by the nurse at first, it is pretty much exactly what it's like if you've ever had a baby before, when you go in for an ultrasound of the baby, Instead of putting the probe on your belly, they're now putting it on your breast and they're just looking around to see the area that the radiologist will want to focus on and ultimately get a sample of tissue from. So just like the ultrasound that you may have had when you were pregnant, you do have the monitor or the screen there that you can look at so you can actually see the area that they're looking at. So you will either lie down on your back or you will lie down on your side. And basically they're just gonna try to get you into whatever position is best in order for them to be able to see what areas they need to be focusing on. I would say that the biopsy needle was about six inches long and it's relatively wide. If you tend to be a little bit squeamish about needles, I would definitely say something, tell the nurse and tell the radiologist. You can tell them that you don't want to see the needle. I actually did that and of course I still did see it, but I think that the radiologists were doing their best to at least not like wave it in my face. <laughs> Just let the nurse and the radiologist know that you're really squeamish when it comes to needles and they'll do their best because they want you to be as comfortable as possible while still being able to get the biopsy done. And then of course you could always just close your eyes. And also when the radiologist is actually getting the sample of tissue, there is a relatively loud clamping noise that happens. And so thankfully both of the radiologists that I had forewarned me about that. They showed me what that noise was going to be. And it kind of sounds like a really loud stapler. If they hadn't have said anything, I probably would have been startled or maybe jumped a little bit. So that's probably why they forewarned me about that. But that's also just a little detail to know about ahead of time. And in addition to getting a sample of tissue during the biopsy, something else that might happen is the radiologist might place a clip or a marker into your breast. And what that is, is it's just a very tiny piece of titanium. It's about two millimeters and they place it at the site of the biopsy. And then that way it will be known through imaging where exactly the biopsy was performed. And then if your biopsy comes back normal, 
That little marker in future mammograms or screenings will indicate, hey, a radiologist already checked this, it's benign, we don't have to do any further testing for it. So in terms of lessons that I learned, the first thing was that the biopsy was actually not very painful in and of itself. The only pain that I really did feel at that time was when I got the lidocaine injections. Those sort of gave me a little bit of a painful sensation and almost like a burning sensation, but it didn't last very long, seconds long, maybe like five seconds tops. And then after the lidocaine injection, when the actual biopsy was happening, I did not feel any pain, so that was really nice. I really mostly just felt pressure, and sometimes my torso would kind of move along with sort of the movement of the radiologist putting the needle in. So it was just kind of pressure, but no actual pain during the biopsy. Something else is that I'm pretty sure that this is a thing, but during both of my two biopsies, the nurses offered to hold my hand during the biopsy. And especially during that first one, I was so scared and I was so anxious that I took her up on it and I'm so glad that I did because it actually did help. So if you're scared, just do it. Just hold their hand. They're offering for a reason. You're definitely not going to be the first person that's ever said yes. And if you're a little bit embarrassed, that's okay. And at least you know that I said yes, so you can be embarrassed with me. <laughs> So something else that I learned regarding pain is that while it doesn't hurt during the biopsy, it does start to hurt relatively quickly after the biopsy. For both of my biopsies, it was within half an hour after the biopsy was completed, I started feeling some pain. And something that I did not expect was that after you get a biopsy, you also have to get a mammogram. And the reason for that is that they wanna make sure that the clip or the marker is exactly where they wanted it to be. During my first biopsy, I remember the nurse wrapping up with me and I remember the nurse saying something about a mammogram and I was just thinking, oh, she's probably talking about like I'll have to come back in for a mammogram after this. But no, it was for right then and there. <laughs> The good thing about this is that they just get a few images. I think it took about 10 minutes total. And then after the mammogram is done, you are completely done with that appointment. So another thing that I learned is that the nurse will offer to give you an ice pack to put in your bra for the drive home. Take the ice pack. After my second biopsy, I just really wanted to get out of there as soon as possible, so I said no, that I was fine. And then I realized on my drive home that I didn't really have that much to eat for lunch, so I went to a drive through And then of course, with my luck, the drive through took forever. And then of course, I started feeling the pain. It was bad. Take the ice pack. With my first biopsy, I think I started feeling pain about half an hour after the appointment. With my second biopsy, I started feeling pain more like 10 or even 15 minutes after. So just to be safe, you should take the ice pack. Did I mention that you should take the ice pack? Take the ice pack. Another lesson that I learned is that since the pain does kick in relatively quickly after the appointment, I would make sure that you have one or two ice packs at home and I think the gel kind or a moldable kind would be best because you don't want anything super hard right up against your breast after that. And then also make sure that you have Tylenol at home. In fact, if I were to go back in time, I probably would have brought a drink and Tylenol in the car. So as soon as I was done with those appointments, I would have gotten in the car, taken Tylenol, and let that baby kick in quick. <laughs> Something else that I learned is that there is a weight lifting limit. I think it was no more than 10 pounds for three days. If it's not exactly that, there is a weight lifting limit for at least three days after the biopsy. And given that I had a one-year-old, I definitely needed help. My one-year-old was definitely more than 10 pounds. So if you do have a young child that you pick up all the time, I would definitely recommend setting up some childcare or at least setting up some help in place so that your friend or family member can help you with your little one. Another thing that I learned is that going into the biopsy appointment, I would wear to that appointment a looser fitting bra so that when you bring that ice pack on your drive home with you, there is some extra room to put that ice pack into your bra. So I hope that this video helps. If you are about to get a biopsy and you're watching this video, just know that you will do it. You'll make it through, you'll be okay. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's also definitely not the worst thing in the world. So I hope that this video will help. Okay, I'll talk to you in the next one, bye.